President Trump, how did he come off? Uh, this will probably shock you. And I just spent a little time, you know, backstage in a room with uh, the man that, you know, I'm hoping is the next president of the United States of America. How did he appear? Uh, really relaxed for a guy who's going through everything he's going through. He seemed really chill. Um, very mentally alert. Shockingly so. Throughout the event, remembered <clears throat> the names of those who were present and guests and their stories and very sharp. Um, really joyful. Smiled a lot. Good sense of humor. Um, you know, doesn't use the teleprompter notes and he was just talking to us freely. Uh, also, I would say um, kind came off as really caring for people and was present and likable, actually really likable. Seems like an enjoyable guy. Seems like the kind of guy, like if you had chicken wings, a beer, and we're shooting pool, he'd be a really good way to spend a Friday night. Um, that being said, uh, he shared a little bit about, you know, kind of what he's working on and uh, just was verbal processing as he usually does. And uh, I recorded a lot of that on my uh, phone, which they were kind enough to allow me to do. If you take a look at everything that we've done, they want to put an end to it. And uh, we made tremendous progress. Well, look, three Supreme Court justices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, judges all over the country, 301, yeah. and it's, you know, it's made a difference. Look, but I'm with you people, and we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to set up a faith office in the White House. Come on. Come on. I don't know how many calls I'll take, but uh, we'll have a limit of 10 per day or something. I know these people, they'll call me a lot. <laughs> Uh, then he was interviewed by uh, Pastor Paula White, and that was kind of the, the sort of the crescendo and highlight uh, of the event, and talked about some of his upbringing in church and uh, some of his uh, relatives, immediate family members who were church members. And, um, you know, the question that many are asking is, what does he think about God? Well, it definitely seems uh, from that interview and others that when, you know, the assassination attempt nearly took his life, he really has come to realize that there is a God who is over our affairs and is working through the details and preserved and spared his life. And so it seems to have brought a God consciousness to the forefront of his mind and also um, has him more grateful for life and uh, God preserving his life. And he said that that's what his sons, basically, Eric and Don Jr., I think it was, told him as well, like, you know, God was involved in this, Dad, because you shouldn't be here. Um, and so he's he's grateful. He's grateful in that regard. Uh, for those of us who are evangelicals, he doesn't use the evangelical language. You know, I was born again when I repented of my sin and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Those of us who are evangelicals, we like it right down the fairway, and we got a few insider baseball terms that we like to hear. I don't think that's his necessarily language and understanding. Um, in addition, I have heard from some who are close to him that uh, off the stage and privately, he has professed faith and someone I know that is close to him. I, I wasn't there. I can't confirm it. Uh, he was perhaps baptized as well. None of that came up in the conversation. Would have been interesting if it did. But also heading into the election, uh, it's really important because evangelicals are, and Christians are tuning in. There was a report out by Barna fairly recently, a researcher here actually in my home state of Arizona, saying that upwards of 50% of evangelicals are looking at not going to the polls and voting, which could be 30, 40 million people. And the last election was determined by about 10% of that number. And it also, uh, not only is it... Uh, to me, it's unconscionable and reprehensible, and those evangelical platforms um, uh, like uh, Christianity Today, which is living down to its uh, woke namesake, um, and also other faith leaders, uh, some in the past who were friends of mine and I thought were Bible guys, but apparently along the way, some thought that becoming a coward was a fruit of the Spirit. Um, that, it's just shameful, really. I mean, you, you should vote because if you care about people, you need to vote for policies because people live under the policies. And if Christians aren't involved in the policies, we're not loving our neighbor because we're not giving them policies that best reflect God's divine design for their life and human flourishing. It's all just very simple. The left is getting out the vote, souls to polls and uh, the progressive liberal woke joke folk. Well, they're signing people up to vote. You've got Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are appearing at churches. Kamala's even preaching. And, uh, you know, they, they're apostates and don't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. At least we know um, on the Republican side, J.D. Vance is a, is a Christian, 
believes in Jesus and has a biblical worldview. And uh, that's why he went Catholic, by the way. If you look at Augustine and Thomas Aquinas, kind of major thought leaders in the history of the Catholic faith, uh, they also had a view of natural law. And that view of natural law sets up an understanding of legal precedent, which is why a lot of the Supreme Court lawyers that are believers, the justices rather, they were trained in uh, Catholic settings according to Augustinian and Thomistic law. Um, on the other side, the Democratic side, we have zero. Insofar as President Trump, where's he at? Uh, that's between him and the Lord. Um, you know, it does seem, though, I, I'm more reformed. And, and so there's this debate. Does God choose you or do you choose God? Well, if you're a Christian, both things are true. I just believe that faith precedes regeneration or that God, or excuse me, that uh, regeneration precedes faith. I'm tired. It's midnight. I've been up for 24 hours and I'm a grandpa. But regeneration precedes faith, that God causes you to be born again, and then you respond in faith. Kind of like a child is born and then they cry out to their parent. We're born again and then we cry out to our God. And so when is someone saved? I think uh, sometimes you know and sometimes God saves you and then you're figuring out what happened to you.